Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this cool gradient animation using linear interpolation. Linear interpolation is a method for finding an unknown value based on two known values. And we can use two known color values to get the third color in between those two colors to create this cool gradient animation. Let's start by using a function called lerp, which is a built-in function within p5.js that allows us to do linear interpolation more easily. And the lerp function takes in a total of three arguments. The first two arguments are the two known values, and the third argument is the amount of interpolation, which ranges between 0 and 1. I'm going to start by actually drawing a square and I can use a built-in function called square which takes in a total of three arguments the first two are the x and y coordinate of the top left corner of the square and then the third one is the width and the height so let's put it at a hundred and height divided by two and give the width and the height as 80 now I actually want to move the x and y coordinate here from the top left corner of the square to the middle here so I can do that by using changing the Rex mode to center. And then now I'm going to draw two more squares and then change the x arguments here to 200 and 300. Now I'm going to declare two more variables called c1 and c2. And then I'm going to set these two values to white and black. And then I'm going to fill in the th first and the third squares to these two color all right and then now i'm going to declare one more variable called c3 and c3 is going to be the color that is interpolated between these two known colors and i'm going to fill that color to this middle square so let's set it to a function called lerp and then provide the first two argument as c1 and c2 and the third one is set to AMT, which is the amount of interpolation. Now let's set the AMT here, map it to, how about we map it to the mouse X location that will go between zero and width. And we want to map it to a value of zero and one because the amount of interpolation ranges between zero and one. All right, and then now we need to fill the middle square with the value of C3. Let's click run, then now, at mouse x equal to zero, the value is 255, so it's basically just white. And as I move towards the width value, it goes from white to black. And that's how we can interpolate between two known values, zero and 255. But if actually these values are not numbers, if these are actually color, we actually cannot use the lerp function. But we can use another function called lerp color, which is also a built-in function within p5.js that allows us to put in two known colors. And it takes in a total of three arguments as well. The first two, instead of just values, they take in two known colors. And the third one is the amount of interpolation. And if we click Run, now it works. And with this, we are able to change it to any colors that we want. Let's do how about red and green. And ta-da! Now that we know how to interpolate between two known colors, how do we create a gradient of colors? And we can actually do it easily using the lerp color function and a for loop. So let's delete all of this. And how about we use a for loop that goes between i equals to zero to i less than width and then I++. Plus plus. All right, and then now I'm going to copy these two line of codes. And then the amount here will be mapped to now the value of I that goes between this point here to the width, right? And we want to map it to zero and one. That's still the same. And what we want to do is that we want to draw a line. And this line takes in a total of four arguments. The first two are the x and y coordinates of the first point, and then the last two are the x and y coordinates of the second point. And then we'll connect these two points to make a line. And these two points will go from i comma zero, right? So this point here to i comma height. 
And basically, we're just drawing a bunch of lines from this point to this point. And then we're going to set its stroke color to C3. Then let's click Run. You cannot really see it here, but actually, I instead of doing I less than width, it has to be I less than equals to width. So that includes the last line where I equals to width. All right. Now that we have this, how about we put it in a function? And this function is going to have a name of set gradient block. And it's going to take in a total of six arguments. The first two are going to be the min and max values, which are 0 and width here. And then y and h, which is going to be the y values here. And the last two are going to be the color c1 and c2. And now we need to change this to min, then this to max, right? min and max. And then this will be y. And then for height here will be y plus h. Now let's just try to call this function set gradient block. And then let's do the exact same thing. So 0 to width and then 0 to height. And the color values will be C1 and C2. Perfect. Now I actually want to interpolate between three colors instead of two. And I'm going to set a new, write a new function called set block color. And basically it will have the same arguments. Actually, it will have one more, right? Because we want to interpolate between three colors. And then now we're going to be calling this function inside the set block function. And it will go from min to actually let's define x and let's set x to 0 0.5. And then let's set range to be between max minus min, right? So we want it to go from min to min plus this amount here, which is x times the range, right? And we want to interpolate between these two colors, all right? And then I want to do the same thing, but now it will go from min plus x times range and then to max and I want to interpolate between c2 and c3 all right and let's change these colors here so let's define c3 and I want these colors to be to this color all right and then now we need to incorporate the c3 into this right so basically we just need to call the set block colors here and it will go from 0 to max, which is width, y 0 to height, and then c1, c2, and c3. All right. Oh, OK. I also just realized that for these set gradient block functions, for the second one, I also need to make sure that I put min plus here, because everything has to go from the same starting point. All right, if we click run, still the same. Perfect. Now I'm going to call these as a block, and I want to draw one next to each other. So this is basically what I want to do. So it will go from, how about, let's say, 0 to 100, and then from 100 to width. All right. And so what if we define this as x? All right, and if we change this, it will just keep moving. All right, we want to create multiple rows of these two blocks that have different starting point or different x values here. Before we do that, how about we put all of this code in a class? So I'm going to come to this arrow here, click the plus sign, and then click Create File. I'm going to call it block.js. And then go to index.html file first, 
copy this line of code and then change this name to the name of your new file in my case block.js this is how you integrate a new javascript file into your program now inside block.js we're going to start writing a class called block and then i'm going to give it a constructor function and also a display function or a method all right let's go to sketch.js so i want to put in c1 c2 and c3 here as the constructor arguments here constructor function arguments so c1 c2 and c3 so this dot c1 equals to c1 this dot c2 equals to c2 and then this dot c3 equals to c3 all right and then we want to put these two functions inside our block class so the format is the syntax is you just subtract you don't need the word function inside the class all right so these are still the same these are still the same okay and then we're gonna be calling this code in display and we'll be calling the set block color method so we need to put in this dot set block color and this dot set block color here and this is how we call a method within a class inside a class all right and actually same thing here we need to put in this dot set gradient block because we want to call this method inside the class inside the set block color method right okay all right so actually x here and c1 c2 c3 here has to be the this dot variables And instead of having it at zero and height here, I'm going to give these as new variables as well. All right, so let's do that. So we're going to have x, y, and height. So this.x equals to x, this.y equals to y, and then this.height equals to height. And let's change all of this, this.x, and then this will be this.y, this will be this dot h because we're going to create a bunch of these rows right and they're not going to have height as the variable h so we want to just we can do this dot h here to width and then this will be this dot y and then this will be this dot h all right uh I think this should be it let's go back to sketch.js i'm going to create an object called b b is going to be a new block object and then let's look at block.js again so we need c1 c2 and c3 and then x y and h so c1 c2 and c3 are defined here and then x and y will be zero right zero zero and then how about we do height as 100 all right, and then we want to call display b dot display method here. Let's click run. All right, so if we change this to 400, we got what we needed, right? But this is just one block, and that is because the x is zero. So if we would do x at 100, now we get two blocks. Now that we have a block object, what we want to do is we want to create a bunch of blocks. We want to create them in a number of rows. So how about we set that number first? Let's start with maybe just three. And then instead of a variable B, we're gonna create an array called blocks. All right, so for let i equals to zero, i less than the number of rows, i plus plus. And then now blocks of i will be equals to new 
block. Now let's put this inside for now. So C1, C2, and C3 are the same. So this is the x value, which is the value that we divide the two blocks, right? So how about we create new variables for that? Actually, I'm going to put it outside here. So let's do x to be equals to width divided by num. So we can space it out evenly to get a stair look, right? And then I'm going to do the height to be equals to height divided by num. So now each of the rows are going to be divided evenly as well. And then I'm going to replace this 100 with x, and then this will be h, and then this will be h. But actually, we need to multiply it by i. So x has to be multiplied by i, and same as h here has to be multiplied by i, right? Let's click run. Oops. Um, we also need to call all of these block objects inside a for loop. Ta-da! All right, let's try to, how about if we change num to 10? Okay, 40. All right, so now we get this sterile looking gradient graphics. Looks really nice. Now we're going to make it an animation by changing this x value right and left. So let's go back to block.js. I'm going to create a new method and I'm going to call it move. And move basically is going to change the value of x, right? And I want to change it by, actually, instead of doing one here, I'm going to change it by a constant value. I'm going to give a variable d, so this dot d. And that is because I want to write a conditional statement that says if this dot x is more than the width or this dot x is less than zero, then I want to have it bounce back and forth. So this is how we detect collision. So once this happens, if the condition is satisfied, then change the value d by negative one. So it will be switching back and forth. All right, let's try that. And then instead of 40 here, I'm gonna change it back to 10. And I also need to call blocks of i dot move. All right. Okay. And now is the fun part because you get to experiment to get a cool animation. And how about we just move it really fast and also increase this by a lot. <laughs> and then let's see. That's pretty cool. This is how you can use linear interpolation, specifically the lerp color function to get a cool gradient color. And then you can create different graphics or animation just like this one. Give it a try.